Welcome to Eagle's Nest, a mentorship program aimed at instilling a culture of export in today's young Zimbabwean entrepreneurs. Today, you and I will learn about the young businesses that young Zimbabweans are involved in, but are they export worthy? Well, we have a panel of expert judges here today to decide just that. George Billionaire Mnengwa. When an entrepreneur becomes a celebrity, or when a celebrity becomes an entrepreneur, the issue seems much like an old philosophical question. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? George Billionaire Mnengwa seems to have a knack for both. Youthful naivete and a keen eye for market gaps led George Billionaire Mnengwa to disrupt the air conditioning industry, making Pro Air the most talked about company of its time. Unapologetic, technical and thorough, Leslie Marange, the CEO of Glytime Foods Private Limited, is well known for his boldness in business and in character. Jackie Hussein is a self-made business icon and consultant who started July 28, a managing consultant firm with over 100 clients. Her tenacious business attitude and drive to assist other entrepreneurs down their paths to success makes her an easy favorite of the panel. A resourceful entrepreneur, Wisdom Gakaka carved out a career with unparalleled success in branding, owing to a keen eye for detail. Cyrex Media is more than just a logo. It represents the total innovation of branding strategy. His success is accredited to his love for learning. A high flyer, disruptive and no-nonsense, Nomvula means business. Founder and CEO of Disruptive Innovation LLC and a Forbes 30 Under 30 alumni. At a very young age, she took an early dive into the business trenches and has the scars to show for it. Eighty percent of the products that you see on the local market are not formulated for natural hair. The 15 percent that are available for natural hair are imported and expensive. So the problem became clear. How do we create products for natural hair using ingredients that are found here locally and around Africa? Hello Eagles, my name is Leanne Shaniwa. I'm the founder and head of operations for Maintain Organics, a hair care company that produces products for natural hair using ingredients that are, for, that are found here in Zimbabwe and around Africa. Having locally manufactured, tried and tested her hair products since 2017, Leanne Shaniwa seems to be on top of her game. A little nervous but confident. But is that enough to convince the footpreneur Leslie? Currently, we have about 30 SKUs and the top five of our top selling um, products, which are the five top selling, sell anything between 100 and 150 units per month. In terms of distribution, we have a retail store that we have in Chisipiti that sells nothing but our, our products. In 2018, we were able to secure a distribution through retail pharmacy, about 15 retail pharmacies, namely the Kenlink and Medix group of pharmacies. We also sell our products via our website, our online store, where we offer a delivery service as well. As we speak, we're actually in negotiation with one of the biggest supermarkets in the country for them to start distributing our products nationwide. And in September of this year, we were able to secure distribution in South Africa as well um, through one of the biggest online um, health and beauty stores in South Africa called Beauty on Tap. So in South Africa, we have a distributor who's actually currently selling our products. Our products are natural, they're organic, non-toxic, non-harmful, and we try our best to also use ingredients that are found locally in a bid also to support local communities. Organics, tell me more. Are you certified? Certified organic? Yeah. No, not as yet. Why okay. not? Yes. Because it's a declaration that needs certification. Yes. For you to actually go there and say we are organic. Mm -hmm. And probably you need a blockchain system around that. Yes. To really then give people uh, the, 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 the confidence mm -hmm. that this thing is organic. Yes. Um, I'm happy about the breakdown. What is your current revenue? Uh, per year? No, per month. Per month, we're uh, doing maybe about 3.5 to 4,000. 
Okay, and the biggest chunk, where is it coming from? From a retail store. Retail store? Yeah, that's in Chisipiti. Okay. Yeah. All right, so have you really exhausted the local market for you to then go to the South Africa to distribute the product? Have you really done mm -hmm. the saturation that is required? Because in my opinion, cha cha charity yeah. begins at home. Exactly. Yeah. In my opinion, no. Which is one of the reasons why we engaged uh, the supermarket I'm telling you about. And we're actually in negotiations in terms of pricing uh, for them to actually launch our products in their supermarkets. Thanks, Lian. Your products are divine. Thank you. I think you may go home without a few. <laughs> okay, um, back to serious things. Tell me, you know, I'm excited about your distribution in South Africa, right. obviously. And I just wanted to understand, with the current negotiations, yeah, what will that do for your business, the impact financially? Okay, so why I was kind of uh, excited about doing South Africa is because, you know, look, at the end of the day, there are some components of our products that we have to import, right? So I needed to find somewhere where I had uh, guaranteed access to to foreign currency, which is obviously the South African market. Because if we do negotiate with the supermarkets and they do give us uh, an opportunity to get into the supermarkets, they'll be paying us, obviously, in the local um, currency. So us getting into the export market, us getting into South Africa, is for us to still be able to get access to the foreign currency that we need for certain components of, of our products. What were your projections like for the next five years in terms of turnover? When we started, to be honest, when we started maybe at the beginning of this year, we were probably turning over per month about maybe 2,000. As I said before, we're probably doing about 3.5 uh, right now. So I would love at least by the end of the year for us to be turning over at least um, 7K. And um, yeah, right now uh, of the three, of the 3.5 that we're making, uh, that's gross. Our costs are about... Oops, stutter okay. stutter there, Leanne. In a game of yeah. numbers and figures, one has to be sure and confident. Let's just say about 1.8 of that. I wonder, will that go unchecked by our judges? Okay, Leanne, tell me, what, what has been your marketing strategy that has helped you grow over the past, uh, is it three years you've been in business yes. now? Yeah, yeah, what can you say has been your marketing strategy to get your brand known? One of the things that we started last year was actually uh, using some brand ambassadors. Brand ambassadors are going to have their followers and you know we had about 10 of them. So you can imagine the rif ripple effect that it has. Okay, awesome. So, um, yeah. Secondly, um, what's your comp there's so many brands out there. What's your yeah. competitive advantage mm -hmm. as a new brand into the market? Why should I use your brand? Because we've gone a long way into creating a product that people can be proud of. A, pr a, a product that when you feel it and you touch it, you know you're holding Africa in your hands. Our products are handmade. I went a long way into researching each and every ingredient, trying to figure out why it is the biggest, the best, let's just say, in, uh, uh, brands in the world do so well. Why is it they do really, really well? And Tommy, lastly, are you happy with your current packaging right now? Um, I know we can do better. Are you happy with your current packaging? No, not, yeah, no. not at the moment. Okay. For me, at this point, you should have numbers. Right. They matter. You should mm -hmm. know your costs, of you know, the profits, that your, your projections. There should be some, some um, informed um, budget that you're sitting with using certain variables. Budgets do deviate, but you should have at least a, a grasp on that. So get yourself mentorship in that space. Okay. Um, it's a yes from me. Well, I can't uh, take away the energy. I'll probably put a yes because of the energy, but clean up what needs to be done. Leanne, I like you a lot. Uh, you remind me of me when I started. You've got a lot of energy. You love what you're doing. You've answered every question that you've got. Even if you didn't know exactly what to say, you had to make something up, which is key. So I think with what ZimTrade is offering, um, which is your mentorship and sharpening you to become better, I think um, you know, you're gonna be a household name to reckon with in the next couple of years. So from me, it's a yes. From all judges, three yeses. Congratulations, you go to the next round. <laughs> Thank you. With three you yeses, so Leanne is through to the next round, but will she survive?
clearly there's a lot more that needs to be polished up if she's going to make it to the next round. Bright Nezomba is the CEO of Nezox Brands, a banana production and processing company located in the scenic Honde Valley. Nezox Brands aims at minimizing post-harvest losses for farmers in the region. I'm the founder of Nezox Brands, which is a banana production and banana processing company. We engage farmers. We, decide, we discovered that 25 to 30 percent of post-harvest losses are being incurred in Honde Valley. Farmers are losing their products due to high post-harvest losses. So we discovered that we can create value for those farmers. Currently, we are producing banana flour, ripe dried bananas, banana chips, banana fiber, livestock feed, as well as banana poultry and poultry feed. So as news Brands, we are at a capacity of producing 250 kgs of flour and 20 kgs of ripe dried bananas currently. And we have uh, put the, the flour in the market and the, our market currently, we are targeting people with uh, gluten-free uh, prescriptions, and which is uh, an urban target market. And for for the ripe dried, we just target our people who just love the snacks. So what we are trying to do as Nesox Brands, we're just trying to, to shift the mindset of the people of being the industry, being at the town, because we are in the we, we are located at a farm. It's, it's like a farm setup whereby all is done on a farm, the raw materials is there and the people are coming and supplying the raw material and we can process the, the products and it comes to, to Harare. So our monthly incomes, so far we are uh, sitting on 600 per month and we have about 50, 55% of our uh, monthly income being cost, which is about $350. So as Nesox plants, we are targeting uh, this uh, for export uh, being our countries which are targeting is South Africa and UK because this country UK have lifted your uh, visa bonds and allocated by my tariffs are allocated to export so it's our target market and also but at the research or tariffs they put you under my products are free so we are able to increase our capacity to maybe a ton to two tons per, per month so that's what I can you, can you give me a little bit more detail about your UK target market? What, you, you mentioned that they have a need for your product, confirm? Exactly. And would all your exports go there? Have you already found clients there? Already have found clients. We have been in contact with some of uh, other people there and we are now trying to work through the process of what my requirements are new to my products and of course they go and they've accepted them the idea of re-engaging trade with the uk has gotten jackie all excited but is bright where she hopes he is or is it just a pipe dream what would one to two tons a month mean in terms of turnover one to two tons means means about that's about almost about six thousand years I'm a bit worried about your uh, branding and your packaging um, because your target market is a bit sensitive. UK and South Africa, these are competitive markets. Exactly. Uh, and it, with the way these things are presented, um, it's not showing that you have really put a bit of effort in terms of, you know, understanding the trends that happened in South Africa, that happens in UK, in terms of presentation. What is the plan? Uh, we we're working on uh, redeveloping the, the package because uh, currently we were just doing bulking. We recently moved into packaging small quantities. We're just supplying bulk quantities if you need about 50 kgs, 100 kgs. Tell me, what's the shelf life of your products, especially these banana? They can go more than six months. Six months shelf life? Exactly. Okay, and what, what is your current, um, how many people are working with you? Currently I'm working with uh, six people, but sometimes when the, when, the, when the work is heavier, we can still contract some local uh, workers. Okay. I think we can hire. So you're working from the farm? Yeah, working on the farm setup. Okay. Maybe just one last question. Mm -hmm. How many farmers are you buying from? So far I'm buying from 30 farmers. But if you increase capacity, we can go for the whole valley. 
by virtue that you are impacting into the communities and you are improving the livelihoods of the people. And I'm also happy that you know you have done your research. Definitely, I think it's a yes from me. Uh, Bright, from me, it's going to be a yes, but this is what I would want to hear in your next round. It's okay. This is what I would, I'd like to understand how you can scale up, given that there is potential. You've got supply. You're saying you can salvage the losses of the farmers that exactly. they're currently making. Yeah. How quickly you could scale up um, and what that capacity looks like. I'd like to hear about your profitability and maybe at a certain capital point, what would be the return on investment? It's okay. Okay. That, so I'll can I you... just answer you just one of the Yes, questions? please go ahead if I you can. I recently uh, purchased the water tunnel from Greencon. They're installing it in next week so that it accommodates two to three tons of bananas per one go. So in terms of scaling our production, um, we've already started. Okay, and right from me, um, I think one of the most important things that you need to do especially if you're looking at the international market, is your branding. You really need to invest in getting a proper, you know, branded product, which shows where it's coming from. And, um, you know, I, I think you're really sitting on some serious gold here. If you really are serious about it, you're in a place where you've got plenty bananas. And um, for me, it's a yes. And uh, you just need to put a little bit more effort. And I can tell you that your product, uh, it's something that is not popularly there around the world and I love how it tastes. So I think if you just market it, put your branding on correctly, um, you can get some serious um, money with this product. So a yes from me and a yes from all the judges. Congratulations, you're on to the next round. Bright is evidence that if you know what you want, you can get it by hook or crook. He goes through Thank to the next right. round and leaves the judges munching on his scrumptious products. Ella Apparel's youthful CEO, Eleanor, is hoping the stitching and sewing lessons she got from her mother will see her win the competition, but with the eagles blowing hot and cold air, will she succeed? My name is Eleanor Tsunga, and I'm the founder and proud owner of Ella Apparel Private Limited, based in Matai. Ella Apparel is a handmade knit and crochet clothing and home decor brand. It's it custom makes each piece according to customer specifications, uh, which results in the ultimate customer satisfaction, loyalty, and referrals. It pays attention to detail, as you can see, and perfects each piece stitch by stitch. By hand making instead of using machines, LR Apparel reduces the carbon footprint and helps the environment in the process. Ella Apparel caters to all age groups and across, and um, it caters to all age groups from infants to retirement age, and there is a piece for each and every season. From infants to toddlers, we have baby wear, baby blankets, etc. For teens to the young at heart, we have braliers, bikinis, uh, scarves. For sorry. For adults, we have scarves, cardigans, jerseys, etc. For the home, we also have drawers, mats, cushions, cushion covers, and the rest. Other things that we also make are bags, pots, water bottles, earrings, headbands. The list is endless. As we speak, LA Apparel uh, makes an average of 150 US dollars in sales revenue per month. And the gross profit percentage is about 70%. We project that this will increase by at least three times with your help to trade the international market and to also increase the brand awareness. Um, to increase capacity, we will employ um, women, especially in my community, which will also help to improve um, their livelihoods. Ella Apparel um, works with different customer bases and has even attracted a few of celebrities, of our local celebrities in the country, as you can see here. Thank you. Eleanor produces and also wears her own products. Will she manage to convince Jackie to buy her clothes? Thank you, Eleanor. I'm Jackie. Uh, I've got a few questions for you. Mm -hmm. Eleanor, you are, you've talked of two sectors. You want to go into the clothing, 
sector and possible home furnishing sector. Yes. What are the size of those markets? Everyone has a home or somewhere where they live. So they will need to furnish their houses accordingly, according to their teas. We cater to those teas. So our market is endless because everyone in, our, in a home will need something to furnish to make their house a home. So we give that uniqueness to our pieces. Okay, beyond the generalization of the obvious, which mm -hmm. is a home will need furnishings and someone needs to dress. Yes. Have you actually checked on the size, the monetary um, size of that market and to actually assess where you could fit in and where you could serve. Have you done that research? I have seen that a lot. there's a lot of demand for luxury pieces, which is what I wear, which is what I produce and wear as well. And I get a lot of traction from people um, inquiring and asking about those pieces and actually making orders. And the thing right now is about capacity and I actually want to employ people to help me with uh, making those things because as it is right now, it's, it's me and I've actually helped, uh, sorry, asked my mother to help me with it because she's actually the one who taught me a long, long time ago and I was still a little kid. So the market is there. I would not know the exact quantity in terms of numbers, uh, but I am sure that, the, that there is a market for it. I just want to know question one, how old is your business? It is... Since registration, it is, is almost one year old. Okay. Yes. And you spoke about $150. Yes. Uh, can you explain what that is? $150 is in terms of the sales revenue that I get per month on average. Okay. Yes. And your net profit is 70% of that? The gross profit. Okay. Just after deducting the, sorry, um, the cost of my sales. That is deducting the cost of the yarn and transportation to bringing it into the place that I work from. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to export. Yes. And exports are going to give you three times what you're having now. Yes. That is four hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Which market are you targeting? I am targeting the middle to upper class. Um. Um. Sorry. Wage. Wage band. Um. And it caters to all age groups, as I had mentioned. So from infancy from when a little child is born they can wear a lot apparel um be it and baby sets baby blankets as you have on the table um up until the, in their old age when they're wearing the cardigans and the sweaters eleanor's one man band doesn't impress leslie um you are doing this alone yes and you want to export yes what is the strategy the business strategy is what I was hoping that I would get um, training from you. But as it is, I am planning on increasing capacity by uh, engaging with a few women from my community, which some I've already uh, identified who have the knowledge and the skill in knitting and crocheting. So it would be just a matter of training them and how to make what I make and we'll be good to go. I think we're at the stage where we'll be able to give you some feedback. Do you okay. want to take take a start, um, Leslie? All right. Thank you, Elena. Um, I'm happy with the work that you're doing. And I feel there are issues around your business. But it's a yes from me. Thank you. George? Um, I would like to say um, I love your, your business. It's a very different business. And um, I think if you were to give it a little bit more business research okay. and find your niche market, um, I think your business can succeed. For me, it's a no. With one yes and one no, and a questionable business plan and marketing strategy, Jackie holds Eleanor's future in the palms of her hands. Eleanor, from, from my end, I believe there'll be a lot of benefit out of the training that we are going to offer all our participants. And I think you, you'll find that valuable. There's a, quite um, some areas that I think you still need to work on. And with that, it's a no for me. So I think with two no's and one yes, we hope you can participate in the next Eagle's Nest. Thank you. Thank you. What a disappointment. Eleanor goes back home with some homework for 2022. The stage is set for the next episode of Eagle's Nest in Bulawayo, the city of kings.